this is quite an interesting sort of like change in pace and not change in pace there's a quite an interesting sort of development happening with festivals here in london and this is this kind of thing happening so this is courtesy of ra and says fabric unveils exodus location and adds new names so if you're not aware um fabric was teasing for a while that they're going to be launching their own festival and it looks like you know basically everybody under the uh, basically everybody and their mum is launching a festival and i kind of you know because i'm a bit slow but i only realized the reason why they're doing is because it's a great way to kind of get around the draconian time constraints that we have here in London because for the most part with with some exception and I think Fabric may be one of them the other one may be Fold another one may be Egg and maybe there's another place in South I think the Victoria or something but there's not many clubs in London that are open past 4am or past five or past six they all close around before that time way before that time so if you're a, an event person so if you're a person that owns a venue or if you're a booker it becomes really difficult to book people because some of the better people now playing nowadays prefer to play longer sets and also people's going out habits here in the uk they tend to go out later so you know it's hard to get people into a club before 10 30 essentially and you could you know you bet you limit you then every half an hour that goes by or hour you're limiting the amount of time a dj can play and the people can come out and see them but then a festival especially a day festival that goes into the late nights and when it closes is the best kind of way to kind of get around it because you can start really early and then you can end kind of late but but it does allow you a broader range or a longer range of time to kind of get people slotted in and obviously again um, if it's an outdoor festival too you can kind of get around and play with some of the noise pollution complaints too you may have in clubs and whatnot especially if it's a bit far out because that's what happened with junction 2 it felt like because junction 2 was like under a, again maybe it's a placebo maybe it's a real thing but i felt like the first time i went to junction 2 one of the things that really say it off for me was the sound and the fact that it was like in the middle of a park underneath a motorway i think it kind of let them kind of be a little bit more take a bit more risk and have you know go a little bit more crazy with the meter right and let it kind of bleed into red for a bit here and there because it was not really next to any residential place especially the the festival main bit i think there was a bit that kind of faced the residential area but the main part of it felt like it was kind of a way so it kind of allowed people to sort of you know be able to kind of really crank up the volume and i feel and love that sort of stuff i absolutely loved it so anyway that being said um it says here fabric has unveiled exodus location as new name so let's go through this ra article it says london fabric has announced a location and more names for the debut festival exodus new artists joining the bill for the july event include ands big up ands man this club has been amazing i feel like i was a big fan of her for a while anyway but then i think again this is me talking from my point of view i get the feeling that that I don't know what she did. It was like a live stream. I think it was a boy room. And I think the Blessed Madonna was also playing on the same lineup. And she definitely had the most the best standout I thought set of everybody on that lineup and I don't know what event it was maybe it was a boiler room thing maybe it was a pandemic thing I don't know what it was but I do remember her smashing it and I felt like ever since that one appearance her flipping star has just gone shh me into stratosphere it's been absolutely crazy to see so big up her um you got dj ram you got shy one big up shy one you got a guy called gerald um you got dj holographic who seems to be on every big uk lineup festival thing she again a, a detroit kind of like up and coming star and other people kind of have a lot of time for her but i feel like i don't know what happened but whoever's her agent has done a splendid job she got used to this uk market and has been killing ever since i don't know if she lives here but it feels like every half decent festival um she seems to be somebody that people already slot in there so big up her chaos in the cbd cop i know a lot of people like chaos cbd but to be honest they're not really for me they sort of seem like a like a um what you call it like a like a happy go happy go lucky version of like tale of us right they kind of feel like a tale of us what do they feel like if, if, I, if i can make an example of it they kind of feel like to me um what do they feel like like a h&m version of tale of us or something i don't know do you know what i mean like that's what they feel like or like yeah like a matthew buxton version of tale of us if tale of us are like i don't know wearing rick owens chaos cbd i feel like i'm wearing matthew buxton and fear of god that's what they kind of mean that to me anyway it continues cobblestone jazz dr banana is also playing and back to back with anna wall scheduled for july 8th and 9th exodus will take place in Cal it's a calvidian hall 45 minutes train from london Liverpool she station the program will be spread across five woodboard woodland stages the new additions join previously announced guests as ricardo Villa lobos jersey rebel big up jersey rebel d bridge um Amelia and his lineup again the list okay decent lineup I love the one thing I want to quickly mention 
is this um, phrasing of 45 minutes by train from London Liverpool City Station. That's a strong 45 minutes still. That's basically the same amount of time just under it takes to get from Liverpool City Station to Stansted. Right, Stansted Airport is on the Stansted Express. So it's still a bit of a mission to get there. And I'm imagining from the station to the place, it's also not going to be a five minute walk if it's going to be out there. But from what I've been able to just see as I quickly peeped on my phone, it's essentially on the way to go to like um, to Chelmsford. Uh, where, where is it in? I've never been in this area, but I've been to Chelmsford before, but I've never been in this area. But it's kind of like just a little bit outside of Havering. Um, was it near actually area wise? Uh, it's near a place called Chipping Onga. So it's kind of like, this kind of it feels like a little bit of the, the kind of the essex type place where people live. It's not really Essex, but the people that, you know, the East Londoners that I know who live here and want to kind of, you know, get a house with a, with a flipping astroturfed garden and whatnot and a, and a, and a driveway they can fit two of their cars in. They usually moved in a sort of direction. But I'm assuming if it is at these places and there's loads of grass and loads of greenery here, there should be an option for them to kind of really go crazy with the flipping sound. So that may be the good option there. And there's also, if I'm just mistaken here, next to the flipping Calvidian Hall, there's a Calvidian hatch, a secret nuclear bunker that you can visit. So it's gonna, it might be quite fun. The program also spread a wood for woodland, so the programming, the Richard Carver, Low Boston, as I mentioned before. Anyway, so lineup wise. Lineup wise, I'm not really mad at it. I've got to be honest. I think the Saturday is pretty decent. You got Halo, Cobbs and Jab live. You got Craig Richards playing back to back with Ricardo Lobos. I don't think you can get, you know, I don't think you could get any worse than that. I feel like Craig Richards is always a really good anecdote or really good balance to Ricardo Villa Lobos' craziness and just unpredictability and he's just freestyle nature. I feel like they kind of complement each other really well. And also, Craig Richards can also get a bit silly if he wants to be on the decks. But I always feel like Craig Richards is a really good, um, you know, um, compliment to Ricardo Villa's style, and obviously they know each other for years of fabric connection. But I always enjoy their sets together. You got a person called Francesco del del Delgado, who I'm not really too sure of. You got Peach and Sugar Free. Yeah, interesting lineup, isn't it? That Saturday, interesting. Um, then in the bunker, you've got Ash Lauren. You got Kirsten CBD. You got Ke Chloe Chalet, DJ Holographic, Shy One, D Bridge in the Reflections Room, Ek Ellie. Eli, Eli Akula and Ski Mask. That's a really odd lineup, that, isn't it? The, in terms of everything going on, right? These are very, like, again, techno -y. I think one of these ladies, isn't, is it Eli Akula signed to, um, what's that label called? Oh, um, Fiac or something, right? Isn't she? I'm, I'm not too sure. But either way, it's a very interesting lineup. Of course, Ski Mask. Um, that would be someone I'd, be, I'd like to see out there. And then in Sean's yard, you got Anne's, Chloe Robinson, back to back with DJ ADH. Big up Chloe Robinson. You got DJ Assault, Jersey Rebel, and Unique. Record store, you got Amelia back to back at Hutch, Bobby with a dot, you got Georgia, you got Mar Harry ha Harry Mc McKenna, Harry McKenna, Harry, Harry McKenna, back to back with Truly Madly, you got Obi and Thomas Station. Okay, and then on Sunday, you got Anna Wall, Artwork, Fatima Yamaha, Ross from Friends, Special Guest. And a bunker stage, you got Daniel Peslo, MCDE. It's funny that he's had to change his name, isn't it? That was all because of the cancellation or the mini cancellation of flipping the Black Madonna, who is now the Blessed Madonna. And I think at the same time, people were complaining about Motor City Drum Ensemble's name because I'm sure Motor City Drum Ensemble refers to Detroit, Detroit being the home of Black, Detroit being the home of techno, not Black and techno. <laughs> Detroit have been the home of techno and obviously a lot of people that are for that sort of like push of like you know represent representation and you know acknowledging the truth and the roots of history of, of techno seeing somebody who's very white in mcde have that name is kind of stuck them wrong so he guess he changed it by force i'm not too sure of voluntarily but i feel like it happened at the same time as um as yeah, the best Madonna got forced to change her name. Um, obviously, formerly the Black Madonna. But I always wondered, how come no one came after Jamaica Sook? <laughs> maybe that's a mad example, but Jamaica Sook, I always thought like, huh, maybe it's just her name, innit? Like, you know, white girls love to have the names Jamaica, Paris, India and shit. Um, but yeah, he continues. Another person here playing is Josh Cafe. You got Kink playing live, Seth Troxler. This is the good thing about it being a fabric event. Because they've got the relationship with all these artists, they can book a really strong lineup of festival of festival acts. Because as a first debut festival, this is pretty weighty. Yeah, this is really good. Um, Seth Trucks are playing on the bunker stage. Reflection, you've got a DVS1 playing, Imogen, Karen, Tape Feed and Volvex. Ooh, that might be one of the that might be the best stage so far I've seen on here. In terms of balance and how they complement each other. This might be the best one. Devious one, Imogen, Karenin, Tape Feed, and Volvox. 
that might be that might be the best one. Another one you got here, Sean's Yard. This is going to be the one full of the shufflers and people on the pingers and mad balloons. It looks like you got Jaden Thompson, you got Silver Lining, Terry Francis, Trauma, Tiny back to back with the dude MD. This is definitely one for the shufflers. And then record store, last one you got a guy called Gerald, Doctor Banana back to back with Anna Hall, Instinct, Mantra back to back with Tasha and Max Sinnel. So a pretty decent lineup of people playing and stuff. So yeah, I'm just interested to see how these get received because, like I said, these are a little bit of a cheat code to get more people to get more people to play obviously throughout a day and obviously give them longer set and also to kind of squeeze as much as you can at people that you're booking. Um, and of course, for punters, it's good too because you can get all your raving out basically in a day and you don't need to kind of carry it onto the night and whatnot. That might be a good one. I just want to double check and see what the prices are like for this event. I didn't actually see, but the prices for this event. Well, I can see here, um, they've got Fabric First members, of course, 35. Let's just see normal tickets. So, weekend ticket is only what 111 pounds or like 90 pounds for a ticket plus 11.30 for the booking fee. That isn't too bad to be fair. That 11.30 booking fee is wild. I wonder why they go up incrementally booking fees. Why don't you just have like a flat rate? But I guess if you can charge whatever you want to charge, you're going to charge, you can charge it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Weekend ticket is £90. And then for the day tickets are 45 I'm assuming, um, on all of them. And if you get early access, entry before 1 p.m., which is psychotic, really. But hey, that means you're leaving your house at what, like 10 a.m. or some shit. Whoa. So um, yeah, it starts at 11, actually. It starts at 11 and it ends at 11. So that's pretty good. So this, this is longer than what it would be in London. Because I feel like London Festival will make you end at 10. So that extra hour is pretty decent. Because that means if you want to be cheeky and really go Go for it you could go to exodus enjoy yourself for the day come back and go raving again somewhere else you'd be absolutely steaming i'm, I'm sure british people unfortunately we just haven't got the or i know i don't have the capacity to bounce around places like that but i know some people out there do so if you can you're going to be enjoying that one for sure going forward but yeah the lineup is pretty sick really good interesting balanced lineup i feel like the program is done really well in each of the different stages and if anything it feels like a place where it's not just like the main stages that are the ones you should be going to. Like, you know, like don't get me wrong, all the all the front sizes look kind of similar anyway, but you know some festivals make it seem like this is the stage to be at. It's like, no, nah, there's actually some stages here that are smaller, quote unquote, but they're actually the ones I would go and check out at like this one, the reflection stage on Sunday. That is absolutely mad. And maybe even the reflection stage on flipping Saturday might be mad also. But these are actually quite mad stages, the kind of smaller ones, or even this one, the bunker and the Sunday also. Um, if I had to pick one or the other, I'd probably say I'd go to both over the weekend. I think ninety pound you can't go wrong really. You get to see Craig Richards and Ricardo Villalobos play back to back, you know. You get to see Cob Cobblestone Jazz live. Um, you get to see Flipping um, Ski Mask perform outside and stuff. I think that'll be pretty sick. And then on a Sunday, you get to blast out with all these guys. Kink Live, Seth Choxler, Devious One Imaging, Karina, and Tep Feed and Volvox. So you can't complain. Really can't complain. So big up Fabric for putting it together. It looks absolutely sick. And definitely something that I may have to keep my eye on in the up and coming days and months.